The pituitary gland, or hypophysis, is a small P-shaped endocrine gland sitting in a bony cavity of the sphenoid bone called sala turcica. It's divided into two parts, the anterior component called adenohypophysis and the posterior one called neurohypophysis. These parts are united anatomically but have different embryological origins, control mechanisms and functions. Embryologically, adenohypophysis is derived from oral ectoderm, which gives rise to an outpouching from the roof of the primitive mouth, grows cranially, and forms a structure called the Redkes pouch. Neurohypophysis is derived from the floor of the diencephalon and grows caudally and remains attached to the brain by a structure called infundibulum. We can find cysts called the Redkes cysts as remnants of the lumen of the Redkes pouch. In this video, we'll focus on the structure and function of the anterior part of the gland, the adenohypophysis. Adenohypophysis comprises three parts, pars distalis, pars tuberalis, and pars intermedia. Pars distalis, developed from the anterior part of Redka's pouch. It accounts for 75% of the adenohypophysis and is encircled by a thin fibrous capsule. Parenchyma is made up of cords of epithelial, hormone-secreting cells interspersed with sinusoids. Stroma is composed of scarce fibroblasts, which produce reticular fibers supporting the cords of epithelial cells. There are two main groups of epithelial cells in pars distalis. The division is based on their staining properties. The ones that stain weakly are called chromophobes. The ones that absorb the dye readily are called chromophils. Chromophobes represent a heterogeneous group of cells, including follicular stellate cells, stem cells, as well as degranulated cells, which have already released all their secretory granules. Follicular stellate cells are the most numerous representatives of chromophobes. They form a network, providing structural support to hormone-secreting cells. Chromophobes are secretory cells and are subdivided according to their staining properties into two groups. Acidophils, which are stained by acidic dyes, such as eosin, and basophils, which are stained by basic dyes, such as hematoxylin. Acidophils include somatotropic and memotropic cells. Somatotropic cells are the most numerous chromophils in pars distalis, making up more than half of them. They produce growth hormone, or synonymously called somatotropin. Effects of growth hormone on the tissues of the body can be generally described as anabolic. It's involved in processes such as bone growth, bone mineralization, protein formation, and so on. In childhood, a lack of growth hormone results in dwarfism, while a surplus of growth hormone in gigantism. Occasionally, GH overproduction may occur in adulthood, causing acromegaly, which is overgrowth of hand, feet, nose, and other acral parts of the body. This is usually caused by a benign tumor of hypothesis called GH-secreting adenoma. Memotropic cells are more numerous in women, but are also present in men. They secrete lutotropic hormone, which is usually called prolactin. This hormone is responsible for breast development and milk production in pregnancy and after labor. Prolactinoma, which is a benign tumor producing prolactin, is the most common adenoma of hypothesis. Symptoms of prolactin overproduction involve absence of menstruation in women, gynecomastia and sterility in men, and milk secretion may occur in both genders. Basophils involve thyrotropic, gonadotropic, and corticotropic cells. Thyrotropic cells produce thyroid-stimulating hormone. It stimulates a thyroid gland into production of thyroid hormones, which increase metabolic rate of almost every tissue of the body. Gonadotropic cells produce two hormones, FSH and LH. It's still unclear whether both hormones are produced by one type of the cell. These hormones play a role in spermatogenesis and testosterone production in men and regulation of menstrual cycle in women. Corticotropic cells are a group of cells producing ACTH hormone from its precursor POMC or pro-opiomelanocortin, which gives rise to many products apart from ACTH, such as MSH, endorphins and encephalins. In general, ACTH stimulates secretion of glucocorticoids and androgens in adrenal glands. 
All aforementioned hormones are released into the bloodstream by a system of sinusoid capillaries. Pars intermedia is a rudimentary part of adenohypophysis in humans, developed from the posterior wall of Radke's pouch. Thus, Radke's cysts are situated between pars distalis and pars intermedia of adenohypophysis. It's composed of mainly corticotropic basophilic cells, which sometimes for follicles filled with a colloid. Pars tuberalis surrounds infundibulum of neurohypophysis, which is highly vascularized. It contains predominantly chromophobes and gonadotropic cells, which form cords around blood vessels, and they may also create follicles. A huge shout out to our new team member Veronica for her stunning pictures. Thanks for watching and hit the like button and subscribe for more videos about histology and pathology.